Now the eyelids. The first and next is the eyelids. The muscles opening the eyelids are the levator palpebris superioris, then the Muller's muscle, and the last one is your frontalis muscles. This is your frontalis muscle. Please try to remember this image. It will help you understand the various surgeries that we are going to do in um, ptosis. Okay. So that is frontalis. Then this is levator palpebris superioris and this is your orbicularis oculi. Okay. These are the muscles. The three muscles act to open your eyelid. Whereas only one muscle helps in your closing of the eyelid. That is orbicularis oculi. That lies beneath. That is the orbicularis oculi. Now let's look at this disease called ptosis. Ptosis means drooping of the lid. Drooping eyelid is nothing but ptosis. Okay. Now, some uh, quick facts about the anatomy of the eye. Please look at this picture. The upper eyelid is covering some amount of cornea and this is 2 mm. So, normally the upper eyelid covers 2 mm of the superior cornea whereas the lower eyelid does not cover the cornea. It is just at the limbus. You have to remember this. Okay. Lower eyelid is at the limbus and the upper eyelid covers 2 millimeters of the superior cornea. This is the normal status. However, when you call it ptosis is that when the upper eyelid starts covering more than 2 millimeters of the cornea. When more than 2 mm of the cornea is covered, that condition is called ptosis. Now, this can be of two types. Either congenital that is from birth to one year or acquired. Okay, the acquired is again divided into four types which we will learn. Uh, but now look at this image. This baby is having a congenital ptosis. Let's get back to our acquired ptosis. The first type is aponeurotic or involutional also known as senile ptosis. Nothing but it is an age related ptosis because of damage to the aponeurosis of levator palpebra superioris muscle. It's not able to pull up the eyelid anymore and hence it results in ptosis. This is an age related condition. Okay. Now let's look at the second type that is the neurogenic ptosis. The most common nerve that is involved is third nerve. Neurogenic simply means there is a nerve problem. Most commonly third nerve palsy causes neurogenic ptosis because third nerve supplies the levator palpebrae and then another the second most common is your Horner syndrome that also causes your neurogenic ptosis. Now the third type is myogenic ptosis that is due to a problem with the muscles and you can understand myasthenia gravis and myotonic dystrophy will clearly cause myogenic ptosis and the fourth one is your mechanical ptosis as the word implies when there is any mass that is causing a increase in the weight or pressure on the eyelid it tends to fall down causing mechanical ptosis okay now let's look at the treatment of the uh, ptosis the various uh, types of surgeries are available depending on the amount of ptosis that is occurring the first one is your lps resection now, a fact over here is that 80% of ptosis cases are due to LPS involvement. Hence, LPS resection will be your first choice of management. Look at this image. This patient is having ptosis over here. And after surgery, you see both the eyelids are at the same level. Now, the second type of surgery is the Fasanella Serva surgery. The remaining uh, type of uh, 10 to 15 percent of ptosis that is occurring uh, due to uh, the Mueller's muscle involvement, you're going to treat it with Fasanella serva. Okay, and then the Horner syndrome is also treated with uh, Fasanella serva because this also involves the Mueller's muscle. This is an important question. Okay, now Fasanella serva is used whenever the Mueller's muscle is involved. Now, I would just like to give you a simple mnemonic to remember the various causes of uh, ptosis so that you can quickly remember in the exam. 
okay they are that is mr man okay mr man this is for your myogenic ptosis m another is for your mechanical ptosis then a is for your apo neurotic ptosis and n is for your neurogenic okay mr man will tell you why the ptosis is occurring okay now uh, let's look at another condition of the lead that is entropion that by definition it is nothing but the inward turning of the eyelid the entire eyelid including the lashes is turning inwards and this is your entropion however if only the lashes and not the entire lid is turning inwards you are going to call it as trichiasis okay now the entropion is again divided into congenital psychiatrical involutional and spastic okay and your uh, mnemonic for this will be sick okay so that will be congenital psychiatrical involutional which is most common and spastic entropion now the clinical features you know because the lashes are turning inwards see you can notice here they are rubbing onto the cornea so obviously the patient will present with foreign body sensation and redness of the eye and there, these are two interesting surgical procedures you just have to remember the names you don't need to go into the details of the procedure these are the jones retractor plication and the wees procedure okay these are used for the treatment of entropion okay uh, the treatment of entropion that is uh, sick john wise is sick john let's remember it like this sick john john wise is sick that means sick is for the entropion types and john jones retractor application and wees procedure uh, these are the surgeries you will use for entropion this mnemonic is just for you to not get confused don't mind the spelling over here j will stand for your jones retractor application and w is for wees procedure so john wise is sick now let's get back to another condition called ectropion okay now again this is outward rolling of the eyelids okay as you can see over here in this picture the entire eyelid is rolled outwards and again this is divided into four different types that is your psychiatrical involutional again involutional is most common over here then mechanical and paralytic okay these are the four types of ectropion and the surgeries are lateral strip procedure and retractor reinsertion there is no john or wees over here lateral strip procedure and retractor reinsertion are the surgeries you will use for managing ectropion so that is about orbit and adnexa all that you need to know for your examination hello everyone this is dr sai suguna your mentor for ophthalmology at medicoab now thanks for watching the video now we have put such videos all together in our ophthalmology app the trial version you can download from the link over here or in the description box below